Hi, it's Jay Pace, Principal of Providence Property Group. We've been researching the Australian property market for decades, and we use that insight to help our clients make distinctive, lasting, and substantial improvements to their income and asset positions. In this short video, I'm going to highlight the main catalysts and factual information that brings Providence to believe that Brisbane is best placed in the current property cycle to be the benefactor of the lion's share of capital growth and performance. Now there's a lot of information to cover, so please pay close attention. To appreciate our current claim, you must first understand that research is the tip of our spear here at Providence and all of the property we present throughout Australia from established to new build, residential and commercial is all subject to a rigorous research process. Now our three tier research approach is what helps us with this, going from a macro, micro and property levels. And this helps us to minimize potential risks in things like vacancy, build, valuation and much, much more. If our research allows us to get clients an extra one, two, three or even 4% growth per year, this equates to hundreds of thousands of dollars over a 20 year period of holding that property. And this is why people come to Providence. As I just explained, the properties we recommend are the result of hundreds of hours of research from our in-house team. There are hundreds of inputs that go into our property reviews. And what I'm showing you today is a very very abbreviated version of all of those factors that we cover. Of course, I want to stress that every city has good and bad property. Not all properties are created equal and not all properties will outperform the city average. At Providence, we only look for properties which have historically performed above the local average. And before we recommend a property, we need to be satisfied with the performance of the state, city, suburb, street, and property structure. Many people think that you couldn't have thrown a rock during the last Sydney property boom, which was 2011 to 2017, without hitting a property that made a ridiculous amount of equity. But the sad truth is that there are many buyers who purchased during this time and made little profit or even lost money. And I'm ta not talking about stuff that's 60 kilometers from the CBD either. I'm talking about places like Alexandria, more specifically Green Square, places like Wentworth Point near Homebush, not just units, but townhouses and standalone homes. And this is why research is so important. So let's look at some key macro and micro reasons to invest in Brisbane right now. We love looking at charts because numbers don't lie. Of course, Past performance is not an indicator of future performance. But without acknowledging the past, Providence could not create a hypothesis for the future. And many people forget that the, at the end of Sydney's last boom, which was in 2001, the Brisbane property market rallied by almost 125% in just six years. And we believe that this surge in performance is due to come again. With the most recent Sydney boom from July 2011 to around May 2017, now over, Brisbane's historical position of performance in a slowing Sydney market is very attractive. If Brisbane, out, if Brisbane performs at even just half the percentage increase that it had last time, the end result will be a higher capital growth average percentage increase than what we experienced during Sydney's most recent boom. Now visually, our research is best represented in the form of the interpretation that we have of the international property cycle. And the cycle's broken down into 24 stages and each capital city has a place on the cycle. And this is available on our website. And we explain the cycle um, in detail during our monthly market update. So if you'd like to be a part of one of those sessions, jump on the website, go to the events section and subscribe. To give us some additional credibility, we like to confirm our findings with other respected research houses. And this chart here is the current national housing property clock from one of the largest valuation firms in the country, Heron Todd White. This is the kind of information that informs our selection choices from a macro perspective. And you can see here that Brisbane 
he is noted on the left-hand side of the clock as being in a rising market, while Sydney, by comparison, is on the right-hand side in a declining market. And from June 2017 to June 2018, the average loss in Sydney has been around 4.5%. Now, Melbourne, certainly at its peak in the market, Melbourne has had 15 years of very good growth, but sooner or later, it was bound to run out of steam. And a perfect example of people following The wrong trend is looking at Hobart. And just after 18 months of performance, it went all the way from uh, basically being at the bottom of the market to being at the peak of the market. Um, So, you know, we knew that that was happening because the local economy just does not have the capacity to sustain such growth. Uh, The research conducted by Heron Todd White definitely does indeed uh, agree with our in-house team's findings, and that is that Brisbane is positioned for an increase in prices, and that's going to happen in the coming years. So let's look at the data that supports this. Again, more charts. Uh, Let's take a look at this one. The blue line describes the annual average percentage price growth of dwellings in Brisbane over the last 17 years. And the black line describes the annual average percentage price growth of dwellings in the combined capitals. What this shows is that historically, where Brisbane has underperformed the combined capitals, it then breaks out and overperforms against those capitals. So if you look at the last five years on the chart, you're going to see that Brisbane in blue has underperformed the combined capitals. So we're actually expecting Brisbane to overperform the combined capitals over the next five years based on that performance. Brisbane property definitely offers a very compelling value proposition against Sydney and Melbourne. And you can see here that Sydney median dwelling prices is almost exactly double Brisbane's, while Melbourne prices are around 52% higher than Brisbane's. So affordability is definitely a factor in this market. And let's take a very close look now at this chart. And if you look at the orange line, it describes Brisbane house prices as a percentage of Sydney's over time. What you see is that in 2016, Brisbane's house prices were 48% of Sydney's house prices. And the last time Brisbane's property was at that type of level was back in 2002. And that was shortly after the last Sydney boom, as discussed in previous slides. Soon after this, Brisbane prices surged rising all the way to becoming 85% of Sydney's median house price by 2009. Now, the blue line on this chart plots Queensland's net interstate migration. And you'll notice that when interstate migration grows, as it did from 2001, there's a positive correlation between interstate migration figures and house price growth. And you'll notice that net interstate migration into Queensland has been growing since 2014, which is another positive sign of impending Brisbane price growth. Now, there's a perception, a very a misconception, I should say, that people in Sydney are a lot richer than um, people in other states. And that's definitely not true, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics. As you can see here, the median household income in Sydney is only around 12% higher than Brisbane's. And the median household income for Brisbane is actually, in fact, 1% higher than Melbourne. So when you when you recall that dwelling prices in Sydney are double Brisbane's and 52% higher in, in Melbourne, you can really see the opportunity for Brisbane price growth. And importantly, Brisbane yields are some of the highest in the country. When yields are high, this means four things to investors. Firstly, improve serviceability. Secondly, the ability to hold more property. Third, the ability to pay down your mortgage faster. And last, easier property holding means less week-to-week lifestyle impact for investors. Now, I've summarized a few of the takeaways that I want you to, to, to use from this video. And that is that Queensland has the largest public infrastructure spending program in Australian history, a commitment of $134 billion of public investment up until 2031, $18.2 billion in major infrastructure in Brisbane by 2022, and that includes a $4 billion Queens Wharf Casino precinct, which is going to be the largest casino in Southeast Asia, $5.4 billion crossover rail 
uh, River project, which they're doing. $3 billion on the airport upgrade with a second uh, runway that they're putting on there. $2 billion of Brisbane Live precinct, so the entertainment precinct that they have. An additional $142 billion of private resource projects across Queensland. 150,000 new jobs are forecast in southeast Queensland by 2022. And net migration is the strongest that it's been in 10 years, surpassing Melbourne and Brisbane. So apartment supply, which is always a concern in every capital city, not just Brisbane, but Melbourne and Sydney as well, this is already self-regulated and it's tipped to uh, back towards demand of the 2019 onwards. So we're quite happy where that demand is going to be. Now per head, Queensland infrastructure spend is 75% higher than the average of all other states over the past 10 years. Well, that's it from me. I hope this was educational. If you'd like assistance with reaching your goals in the Australian property market, feel free to visit our website or call Providence directly.